Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be connecting the dreaded, the horrible, the infamous MTHFR with hydrogen sulfide. Stay tuned if you want to learn how these two are kind of connected. But before we get into this connection, I want to talk about something really important right out the gate. This is the single most important part of this entire video. You ready? Your genes are not your destiny and you are not doomed in any way, shape or form simply because you have an MTHFR polymorphism. This is not necessarily the reason why you have a disease or you have an illness or you feel unwell. And if you believe that up until this point, I'm so sorry. That is largely the fault of the functional medicine and the naturopathic medicine community. And I, for one, am ashamed that they have done that to people. You don't need to spend the rest of your life taking high doses of methylfolate and special activated B vitamins just because of the SNP. I'm living proof of this. I do not take methylfolate and I have not one, but two MTHFR polymorphisms. And guess what? I feel like I'm pretty healthy and I feel pretty damn good. So first things first, your genes are not your destiny. Don't freak out. Don't lose your shit, pun intended on this channel always. If you have one or two or more MTHFR polymorphisms, it's honestly not as big of a deal as you once were taught. And I want to mention at this point in the video here, my intention here is only to draw the, con draw the uh, connection between MTHFR and hydrogen sulfide. This is not meant to be a, a total MTHFR program or you know, protocol based video. If you want that kind of information, I could go more in depth on that, but I'm going to ask you to let me know in the comments down below. And no, this is not a trick that YouTubers play just to get you to comment on their video and up the engagement. But the thing is, I feel like MTHFR and genetic SNPs, that's too far removed from gut health. And I don't feel like that would be the best use of my time here on this channel, unless you guys convince me otherwise. So if you want the MTHFR protocol and you want me to do a video on that and going more into detail, let me know down below in the comments. Otherwise, I'm probably just going to bag it and I'm going to continue on this three-part series about hydrogen sulfide. So all that being said, without further ado, let's try to connect these dots a little bit, shall we? So we're going to go ahead and just brush off the rust for some biochemistry I haven't thought about in a hot minute. And we're going to go starting with the story of protein. So remember that protein is a chain of amino acids, kind of like pearls in a pearl necklace. So we would call the entire string of pearls the protein and that each individual pearl is an amino acid. So when you eat dietary protein, particularly from animal based sources like chicken breast, chicken thigh, steak, pork, bacon, whatever it might be, you're going to get protein in particular from those meat based sources. You're going to get a lot of methionine. That is one type of amino acid. And then here's what you do. Your body converts methionine into a compound that you might be familiar with called homocysteine. Now, if you rewind the clock about a year or two, I talked about homocysteine in my series about how to measure inflammation or how to test for inflammation. This is a marker that we can measure in the blood. It's relatively inexpensive and it's relatively widely available both through LabCorp and Quest and hospital-based labs, as well as some of the functional labs. And with good reason, this is a marker that's associated with all sorts of inflammatory diseases like cardiometabolic disease and things like dementia and Alzheimer's. So keeping this under wraps and keeping it in that sweet spot zone where it's not too low, not too high can help prevent these sorts of diseases. So we, we eat protein, we get methionine, methionine is converted to homocysteine, and then we can actually convert homocysteine back up into methionine and they go round and round and round. Now, there are multiple nutrients that are needed for this cycle to continue. And there's actually a little shortcut pathway that goes directly up the middle if we wanted to talk about that. So we could make the case for a lot of different nutrients, but the two that get talked about the most and it, it is tied in with MTHFR to some degree or another, that's going to be folate, AKA vitamin B9 and vitamin B12. And you get your methylated active form of folate from the MTHFR gene. So MTHFR converts your folate into the active methylated form. And then that is taking part in this upward part of the cycle. 
right? So we go round and round and round to get from homocysteine back up to methionine. We need these two B vitamins. And then, like I said, we could easily make the case for things like SAMe, magnesium, zinc, choline. There are other nutrients that matter here. And of note, the enzymes that are in charge of activating your B9 and B12 need other cofactors as well. So like MTHFR needs riboflavin vitamin B2. So we could make a case for many different nutrients, but this is where MTHFR kind of plugs into the side of this cycle. But wait, Dr. Deneza, you promised to talk about hydrogen sulfide and you haven't written that anywhere on the board yet. Oh, ho, ho, my friend, but I have sort of. Now, if you think about this, if we just go round and round forever and ever, and we are constantly eating dietary protein, it begs the question, wouldn't this get higher and higher and higher and higher for your entire life until it kills you dead? It would, but we do have an exit shoot, and that's what I haven't drawn yet. So we can take homocysteine and we can send it down the exit chute, down the drainage pathway, if you will, through the transsulfuration pathway. Now, this is one of your main detoxification pathways and it's responsible for creating glutathione, which makes it very important. But the other thing is that it does create some hydrogen sulfide. Now, here's the catch. And I guess I can draw that in here, I suppose. Here, so I'll go off to the side. There. So there's some H2S coming off the side from that transsulfuration pathway. Now here's the thing, my little chili babies. This is going to be much different than what you probably thought about when you saw the title of this video. We tend to talk about hydrogen sulfide in the Facebook groups and the Reddit threads as though it's all the same thing doing all the same thing, but we're getting it confused. When you're talking about gut-based hydrogen sulfide from things like bilophila and Vibrio and maybe things like E. coli and Klebsiella or SIBO, we are talking about an exogenous source of hydrogen sulfide. That means it's coming from outside the body, outside of our own tissues. This is being made in our actual body, in our cells, and that is the endogenous pathway. So E-N-D-O versus E-X-O exogenous versus endogenous. And I'm going to break this down in a couple more videos. But the important thing to know is that endogenous hydrogen sulfide, the stuff that we actually make in our own tissues, is thought to be incredibly, incredibly protective and anti-inflammatory. It has a whole host of different talents. They are studying this for prevention or treatment of cardiovascular disease, neuroprotection, detoxification effect, there's a lot of really fascinating research. And frankly, this was one of the ways that I started to question the SIBO hydrogen sulfide space. Because when I went on to PubMed and I typed in hydrogen sulfide, the overwhelming majority of the research that we have right now is looking at the many benefits of this compound and how we can actually increase it in the human body or potentially make drugs that release hydrogen sulfide in the body, yes, they are researching this, for the benefit of human health. So endogenous homemade hydrogen sulfide is actually probably a really good thing unless you get to some insanely high dose versus exogenous bacterial made hydrogen sulfide, which I think most of you clicked on this video because you're interested in, that is a totally different pathway and therefore requires different treatment. So in the next two videos, I'm gonna break this out and we're gonna talk about the endogenous pathway and the exogenous pathway and what you might do to target these two separately. You can't just take zinc and B12 and molybdenum for all of them and hope that that's good. That's not, they're not the same thing and that's very different biochemistry involved. So we're gonna talk about that in the next video. Stay tuned if you wanna learn more. Hopefully you're seeing the connection, but hopefully it didn't feel like too much of a bait and switch, but I wanted to make this point that the two are connected, but not in the way that you probably think. If you couldn't tell, one of my specialties is helping you weed through the BS so that you can actually move on with your life and feel better. Do you need to be terrified of the dreaded MTHFR? Do you need to take a fancy schmancy methylfolate supplement for the rest of your days just because you have a super common SNP? No, you don't. Again, I'm living proof of that. But 
there's a lot of misinformation around this topic, and there's probably even more misinformation and fear-mongering in the gut health space, particularly as it pertains to SIBO. And honestly, that's probably what's keeping you stuck. It's not a lack of knowledge that's keeping you stuck. It's that you have so much knowledge in your head now that is frankly incorrect that that makes it hard to move forward. You're trying to juggle eight bajillion different things that might not even apply to you. And it's hard to weed through not only what is bullshit and what is accurate, but also what makes the most sense for you as an individual. Something that is useful and accurate for one person might not actually apply to you. So how do you figure that out? How do you move forward and actually just feel better so you don't have to be on he uh, here on YouTube watching my videos for the rest of your life? Well, if you want more help with that triaging and that figuring out of what makes sense for you and what doesn't, what is true and what isn't, I would encourage you to check out FODMAP Freedom. I'll link it down below in the description and the first comment if I remember to put one on this video. But basically, this is my group coaching program. We enroll two or three times a year and we're getting ready to enroll again in April. So it's right around the corner. And before you say any more, I know a lot of you are rolling your eyes and you're like, oh, group coaching, no way that won't work for me. I'll tell you what, not only do I get stupendous results and I have a 100% money back guarantee on the program, meaning if I don't help you get results, there's really no harm, no foul other than your time and effort. But also the vast majority of my students coming into the program who have gotten good results were once convinced that they were too advanced or too special or too sick. And there was no way a group coaching program would ever be able to help them. And then I did. And Oftentimes they have felt like I've already worked with a million bajillion practitioners. Why would this be any different? Why would this lady be able to help me when 10 other naturopaths and functional doctors were not able to do so? So if you want to check it out, I don't know what else to tell you, man. It is different. It's special. It's stupendous. It's my baby. Just come check it out. I would encourage you to join. Like I said, if it doesn't work for you, I'm going to give you your money back. So there's really no harm, no foul. Come find out if I'm full of baloney or if I actually have the tools and the knowledge necessary to help you feel better. We're going to hold your hand every step of the way and it's going to be a heck of a journey, but I think that you're going to come out the other side feeling like a new human being. One way to find out, right? Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.